How long has it been? Thank you, R2. Too long. It's been too long. How John. long has it been? Two weeks. Welcome, too long. welcome into the Hall of Chronicles. Uh, we're gonna keep this going, I guess. Let's rock it, baby. <laughs> welcome in. Welcome to the Hall of Chronicles. Uh, we're happy to have you here. Uh, we've got a lot going on this week, but first and foremost, we want to thank um, all our listeners out there and uh, followers on all the various social platforms like. Uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, YouTube. So thank you. You can always find us at Hollow Chronicles, and then yeah, check us out on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud. We're we're Subscribe, out there. Subscribe, comment. Yeah, we want to hear from you. Of Communicate. course. Communicate. Yes. Uh, like any good podcast, we want to we want to participate with you. But man, Josh, what? Shout out to the BMB. Who? The Blue Milk Brigade. Nice. Shout out to the BMB. And um, I would be remiss if I did not mention we have a guest producer in the house. It's none other than... The uh, Spuno. The Spuno out there on... Uh, <laughs> he's putting his hand in the camera. Thanks, Spuno. That's the last time you do that, okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, Spoon's here, and uh, he's helping us out while uh, uh, Trevor is out uh, tonight. But he'll, he will join us uh, this weekend as we, as we catch back up. This weekend? I don't know. I've even got... I, ideas and menstruations on maybe a daily cast during i don't know what's going on this week hmm. well I, we're over 400 followers now on Twitter. oh yeah yeah that's that huge that's huge news are you talking yeah, about it's that? huge news i'm sure that's going to be uh um everywhere no i think Star Wars news. there it is that well, was pro josh i've heard I've seen on Twitter a lot this hashtag SWCC. Um, that seems to be all over the place right now in the Star Wars world. Yeah, who knows what that stands for? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, the Star Wars Celebration Chicago, Illinois. Wow. Is happening right now. This the Windy is, City. This is a Thursday night, um, April 11th. Yep. And it's on. It's, it's happening. totally on. There's people. We're we're getting pictures. We're getting f- flooded with pictures from Twitter. Um, we have boots on the ground. We're not un- able we to do. get there. We got a BMB or on the ground out there. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little more later, but, um, it seems to be a really exciting time for a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> it and it, it kind of bums me out a little bit, but, uh, we would definitely love to be there with all of the celebration attenders. Oh man. Um, God, it joking. just looks awesome. You it, are not joking. It's the Super Bowl of Star Wars. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the main thing is that uh, I, I guess we just have to survive, right? Well, every thing that we think we know might change in the next 24 to 48 hours. Cool. I mean, even through the weekend, we're going to get more information. We're going to get trailers on movies and television episode you know shows the mandalorian right maybe a little uh sneak peek at the next season of clone wars um and then of course episode nine so we're gonna get a title which by the way it was thrown out a couple weeks ago uh a possible title leak as uh, the will of the force and then today it's kind of picking up a little bit more steam so i mean do you think that's do you think that's just people wanting their steam to to grab hold before we actually find out what it's really going to be? So, so just kind of like uh, um, titillating the Twitter seekers, <laughs> twiddling, <laughs> twiddling them a little bit, getting them them excited, throw, uh, throwing something old out again, or just, just locking to... it down. Like, look, we're putting our line in the sand, and uh, before you know the official announcement, where every every theory, every um, idea, every creative, witty, you know, well, throw out is thrown out. Josh, we're going to get to some theory here in a little bit. Okay. On this episode. But um, some old Star Wars news, you know, uh, again, it's been a couple weeks since we've gotten together and, and visited here on the podcast. But um, author of The Aftermath, Chuck Wendig. Yeah, that's a, yeah. I, he, I read uh, that. He came out with a, kind of a hot take about. J.R.R. Tolkien in the Lord of the Rings um, fantasy series, he, he wasn't didn't he didn't come off as a fan, and even more so, I think the comment that kind of got everybody buzzing was he 
he said that world building isn't a genre. Yeah, and by that you mean when you create an entire uh, new <laughs> world? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> or universe? <laughs> there's like pre-Tolkien fantasy, and then there's what we know as fantasy. And What is pre-Tolkien fantasy? I'm not sure. Is that just it's, like nursery rhymes? Well, it's probably like Jules Verne. Okay. You know, some yeah. like some a little bit of sci fi and a okay. little bit of fantastical stories and sure. You know, but um I don't know. In in my opinion and I I'm a I'm a very big Tolkien fan, uh C. S. Lewis fan, um, those early fantasy kind of writers. Right. Um and, and even you and I were talking like Terry Brooks, awesome. Yep. Um, Robert Jordan Robert for me. Jordan. Yep. And uh, even uh, jo- George R. R. Martin, you know, now Yeah, yeah, a newer uh, a newer fan- you know, I, fantasy. I was like, well, not he's not necessarily newer. He's been around for quite a while, but with the TV show comparatively, shows, he's yeah. gotten a lot of steam, of course. Um by the way, last season <laughs> starts Sunday. This Sunday. Hey, <laughs> As if there weren't enough things to be looking at. Yeah, for, haha, so. you guys at Star Wars Celebration, you won't have time to watch the first <laughs> last season <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Too busy going Woo-hoo! to your panels. That's why we stayed home. Exactly. Damn it. <laughs> but um, no, it just, to me, and I, and I know that he immediately got heat for his take. Right. And uh, I don't know what he was expecting if he thought there were people out there that thought similarly similarly to him but um when you go out and you kind of disparage you know one of the um one of the pillars of right. fantasy and sci-fi is you know similar to fantasy it's another well, sure. world it's, it's all fantastical right yeah and and you know and i i will admit and i admitted this to you that the fellowship of the ring has some slow churn in parts the whole council of elrond that took a while for me to chew through as a as a middle school high school kid. You know, every time I read it, I kind of hustle through that just because there's just so much yeah. going on, and uh, it kind of for me it grinds to a halt a little bit. But after that, I mean, everything's just flying, and I sure and I, and I loved it. You know, I, even as a kid, I loved it, and I still do. So any any kind of hot take where you're disparaging one of the Mount Rushmore, you know, authors in modern history you know it's it's not gonna be a good look you're not gonna i don't think you're gonna get a lot of support for it i think you keep that opinion to yourself and you don't blast it especially and we talked about this too especially when you're standing on the shoulders of of george lucas who created this fantastic world yeah galaxy let's say and you get to take all the parts and pieces from that and write your own story which was aftermath the aftermath series and then to make that comment is almost to you know, cut off your own foundation, you know? Yeah, it's a little, um, I don't know. It, I mean, he made up aliens, he made up names, he made up everything just like Tolkien. Now, maybe, you know, depending on your languages, point of view. alphabets. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah absolutely. It, George Lucas built the world for Chuck to write his book. Yeah. And Chuck benefited from that. And it just seems a little, uh, Disingenuous or I ungrateful. He, you I know. think he had a couple cocktails and was, you know, maybe he was tweeting. Maybe it happens. And, you know, I, I personally don't know Chuck, so I'm, I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, eesh, you know, maybe if he had the opportunity, maybe he'd do that one over a little bit. Right. But, I agree. But you know, for those out there trying to get into the sci-fi and the fantasy world, you know, that those are the bars you're being compared to. Sure. You know, then they're always going to be popular. Because they're good books. Like, yeah, you may not have liked it. That's fine. There's people out there that don't, but you got to at least pay homage to the fact that they did something first so that you could. Sure. You know, well, you know, hey, we all say dumb stuff. It, Get ready. We still got a lot of pod left. <laughs> yeah. Who knows what kind <laughs> of stupid stuff we're going to say next? Oh, but anyway. Hey, so first, before we move on, okay. you know, I, 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 are we going to talk about Star Wars Celebration anymore? I do want to just shout out there to everybody. So have fun. Um, I have, I, I want to give uh, some, some props to, you know, some people that we follow too that are really doing a great job of just giving us good intel on, on the event. Um, it's just a lot of fun. So thank you for sharing, everyone out there. We love sharing. Obviously, that's why we're here sharing. So uh, I just. You know, thanks. We're living vicariously through your Absolutely. awesome experience. And, and 
and um, you know, a hope of ours is maybe that we could get a hold of maybe one or two people that went and just kind of hear their experiences, yeah, absolutely, and, and stories. And I think that yeah, if you want to guest star on the uh, on the Hollow Chronicles here, then then give us a call next week after you recover. And hit us we'll, up in the DMs. Yeah, hit us up, and we'll we'll be happy to have you on. And let you tell us all about it. Incoming transmission. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, uh, we took a poll, and uh, this is this is not mailbag necessarily, but um, we took a poll over 400 votes, which was kind of cool to see. Yeah, on uh, what would be the toughest pill to swallow in episode nine, and the four choices were um, in this order. Uh, the toughest pill to swallow would be to see R two not make it. Wow, that was 37 percent of the vote. Uh, the next highest at 30 percent was Chewy. No, yep. Not making it. Yep. And then third, the Falcon not making it. That's my vote. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, man. And then the fourth, and and probably not surprising, uh, Leia not making it. Carrie Fisher already passing. I think I think a lot of people have an expectation that she's not gonna make it through the movie. Um, if you listen to our previous podcast, yeah, then you wouldn't you wouldn't might consider the possibility that she does. Sure. She could. She could. She could make it. It's not. It's not out of the world to think that she. She is just a goner. But they could all make it. Everyone could make it. Everybody. Could. Why not? Let's yeah. have another medal ceremony. <laughs> right, Spoon. Chewy, you get a medal finally. <laughs> Chewy gets a medal. Um, but then uh, uh, a question. I guess maybe a little bit mailbag. Uh, my wife wanted me to ask you, Josh. Uh oh. And we haven't talked about this. This okay. is just straight okay. this is just straight off the hip here. Sure. Um so you know a few podcasts ago, Trevor and I I got pulled over by a policeman. Sure. And we ended up having a great conversation with him because uh, we had some Star Wars stuff and yeah. in the truck and he thought it was really cool and let us go and then I didn't get a speeding ticket. Yeah, pro tip. <laughs> um uh my wife and I were talking about, you know, getting pulled over and i said well just in case you better have some star wars stuff in the console right just right. To, just in case you said. know yeah, and she it. laughed and she goes she goes well i've got a star wars tattoo and i was like oh true i said but you're gonna have to take your pants off <laughs> to show them and so, <laughs> so it's on her hip and uh and uh i said there she goes she goes ask josh if he thinks um if you show an a uh, graded figure has a better chance of getting off for a ticket if I take my than if I take my pants off and show him my tattoo. <laughs> what do you think has a better chance of not getting a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Twitter. It, what do you think? It, it dep- <laughs> if it's a female officer, well, <laughs> I hope you have a graded figure in the car. But <laughs> otherwise, yeah, I, I, I I'm afraid to answer that, but. Uh, uh, odds are it depends on how you present it. If you just hop out and start taking your pants off, you're going to jail. Hey, wait, i got to show you something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe uh, yeah. we'll put it up to a poll. Yeah, we'll put it on a poll. Pants off or ticket? <laughs> or graded figure. <laughs> or graded figure, yeah. Graded boba. Or graded pants off. <laughs> <laughs> and with that... <laughs> Easter eggs! All right, I hope you guys listening don't mind us hustling through these things because we got a little bit of content to get to, but... Uh, the Easter egg discussion for this week. Um, I've been going through. Last week was spring break. Um, <laughs> you okay over there? <laughs> last week was spring break, and uh, we we at our house we were kind of we kind of were homebodies this break. We didn't go out anywhere. I'm I'm coaching, so I'm sticking around, and and so I started watching some of the uh, prequels again, and. Um, Oh, this wasn't in the prequel. This was in the Force Awakens. I'm sorry, yeah, Force yeah. Awakens. And uh, in Maz's place, there's just a panning shot. We were going down the three PO track there. Yeah, I was. It's all right. Was. Um, it's all right. It's been two weeks. <laughs> it has been. <laughs> there was an eighty IG eighty eight head being used as a lamp in a, a, a pan shot. Um, an IG head. An IG. Not eighty eight. Hopefully, IG. I mean, he's got to make it right. He's going to be. In, in a series soon. Well, old canon, I think he doesn't make it. But, <sighs> but that's gone. Old yeah. canon's gone. <laughs> like Kaiser Sose. <laughs> He's gone. So, yeah. Um, Josh, what were, what were you doing over spring break? You know, uh, we're representing today. I'm representing. Yeah, I'm because Josh is, I am. Um, 
Where'd we you get that the, shirt? Uh, Where'd you get that shirt, Josh? Uh, the interwebs. Or I, maybe I got it on the island. I don't know. What island? My uh, my stormtrooper um, Hawaiian head is ginormous. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, it's it's uh, compensating for something. I, I don't know what's happening here. No. but uh, know, they look the same size. But as aloha, me. mahalo for for the shirt. Uh, no, it was uh, we uh, we took a little spring break vacation to Hawaii with my family, and uh, it happens to be over my birthday. Um, oh, which, happy forty second birthday, Josh! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks. No, I happen to be over my birthday, 42nd, Sean, born in 77. You're supposed to say happy 42nd. Oh, happy 42nd to you, too. Yeah, we're like three days apart yeah, or something. Uh, <laughs> weirdly, weirdly, one of the weird coincidences with yeah. this whole deal is that we're a week apart in age. So. I'm just younger and more selfish, so I just don't think about other people's birthdays. Fact. Younger. Youngling. Younger. Anyway, um, yeah, so we... <laughs> week. <laughs> so we went to uh, Hawaii, and that was fun, and... Uh, my wife, uh, I just got to share this because it's really cool. She understands my love for Star Wars. So everything I got for my birthday was Star Wars themed. Ooh. And she took it along with a little note that was kind of like, when I read the note, it was like, oh, man, I wish I had a cool shirt to wear. And then I opened the package and it's, you know, this cool shirt. So thank you, wife. I don't know, Sammy, you throwing that. I mean, Spoon, are you throwing that up there? Thank you. So there we are. And, our, and me with my, looks like I ate a stormtrooper. But other than that... <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my lovely wife. Thank you, babe. Um, th- that reminds me, Josh. Uh, you being in Hawaii, Hawaii is a very popular place to shoot. Sure. Uh, movies and scenes and yeah, Jurassic Park. We got Kong. Uh, King Kong was out there. For Lost. Lot. Well, if you want your, JJ. we said popular movies. Oh. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, well, we'll connect JJ. the JJs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um question for you josh all right have there been any scenes in any of the star wars movies in hawaii i think you're baiting switching me here but i'm gonna throw it out there and be an idiot that's fine kill me on twitter i don't care uh i went there with the full intention of like i was even talking to andy we tried to maybe pod from from hawaii with me in hawaii and we uh, tried we legitimately tried we legitimately t- tried but the wi-fi and all this the you know the connection just the details, wasn't great it was terrible to be honest with you so we bagged it, but you know, if we could reach across the galaxy and yeah, just, and uh, and touch and zoom in on that. No, it's good. Uh, um, we would have. We but would have. We couldn't. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I would have to say Rogue One because I made jokes about that. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go and if I could, if I could, uh, you know, pod from the beach, I'll I'll try and get a sunset and I'll do a kind of a just a Rogue One finale for our pod. But uh, I'll go with Rogue One. It w- it would have been glorious. It would have been. I, I was thinking maybe I'd. You know, just I don't know. Well, uh, Scarif in Rogue One, yes, was actually not shot in Dang. Hawaii, although it has. The, I could have looked it up. I mean, the, I have Google the blue waters and the white sandy beach, and it's just beautiful palm trees. Yeah, it looked like it could be. I should have gone with my first thought, which was the Hoth scene. I get it. Yeah, yeah, I always screw up. On Silly this. you, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, Scarif was shot in, uh, I don't. I don't know if I pronounce this. It's a word that I never feel like I'm saying right. Maldives, sure. Maldives, Maldives, Maldives. If you just go Malda, and just Malda. don't. Say, Malda. Malda. There it is. Sound like I nailed Adam it. Sandler. Malda. I do not. Say so where's that located? Malda. Where's that located? I don't know. Oh, cool. Maldives. You have Google too. I guess we got to leave something for people to go look up yeah, for I us mean, the, and I, just completely correct us online immediately. It's Maldives, and they'll spell it out phonetically, and we'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, and it's located somewhere in the ocean. Ocean. Got somewhere, it. Somewhere in the ocean. I figured that as much. It's got to be, I, I don't know, <clears throat> it's got to be somewhere out there because, you know, uh, uh, Star Wars' affinity to, to, to shoot overseas, and so it's, yeah. you know, it's too expensive to shoot in Hawaii. Which... What kind of scenery haven't we seen yet that you think might be in nine? Because we're introduced to nearly every movie. We're introduced to new locations. What's well, a what's a scenescape that we haven't? seen I mean, yet? we've seen jungle. Yeah, well, Yavin's a bit of jungle, but we haven't seen any inter- interaction. Same with Mav's palace or whatever is is jungle. It's kind of foresty. Yeah. We've seen desert, desert, and some more desert. We've seen, we've seen some... snow. We've seen salty snow and. Uh, what else? Like salt flats, yeah. 
Yeah. And we've also seen, I don't know. We've seen islands. Yeah. So the only other thing that would be would be like underground or cityscape, but that's Gorson. I, I don't know. There's yeah. not much left. Top yeah. to bo- We've seen asteroids. Topography. We've, We've seen, seen lots of asteroids. Asteroid. So yeah, I don't know. Exogorths in asteroids. Nice. Thank nice. You. Thank you. There you go. Um, yeah. Makes me kind of wonder what 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 haven't we seen yet that we might? We've seen some mines in solo. Mm. Um yeah, and the kind of the the gurgling. Oh, definitely lava. Lots of lava. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, okay. Maybe moving on. Some mountainous Move stuff. Along. Maybe. Well, sure. Know, maybe. Move along. And there it is. Move along. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry about that. I missed on the. Show button. me your collection. In the last two weeks, we've had two collections that we featured on hashtag Show Me Your Collection Saturdays. Um, by the way, if you have a collection, great or small, just starting out, or you've been collecting for years and years and years since you're a little kid and you first experienced Star Wars, um, and you would like us to feature you on show me hashtag show me your collection, then just direct message us up to four pictures of what you have on Twitter. On Twitter, please. At Holochronicles. At Holochronicles. <laughs> And um, we 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 really get a lot of enjoyment out of it because we have collections. We are sitting in a collection. Yeah, welcome to the new set, hopefully the permanent set, um, as I move around my house. Uh, yeah. So this is your office. And your... This is the original collection place. This is where all my Star Wars stuff resides. There's some, there's some stuff laying around here. Hopefully you uh, take a peek at what's going sure. on around us. Sure, if here. you're watching on YouTube, you can see this, so... There you Um, go. And the cool thing is the set will always be changing. (laughs) As I add, 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 and add. Not not remove. There's no remove. Um, (laughs) Never. Never any removing. (laughs) But our first um, hashtag show me your collection uh, comes from Gabriel uh, or at Gab underscore Ochoa. And this guy was all into six inch black series figures. My man. And he did some, um, you know, he, he was... Troop building, army building, uh, he just had he just had a lot of he's got a lot of lot of black series figures and they were they look pretty cool all stacked together and um it, there it is yeah it should, looks oh, great no I love it, it yeah we're throwing it up on the screen here cool and uh, there it is on the yeah it's beautiful the, I I I love this guy here's why he has a very strong ability to take those figures out of their box. Yeah. I'm he, so proud of him. He defeats that little piece of tape. <laughs> oh, that my gosh. That little piece of tape yeah. is such a bugaboo to so many people. Oh, it drives me crazy. Um, but, yeah, he, he's got them out of the box. Oh. You can play with these, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Thanks for sharing, man, and, and a great display, a great way to set them up. And I would be so appreciative to go and look at this, this, you know, this collection because of the fact that, that this man has the courage to yeah. just take it out. And I'd be like, look at those figures. I mean, they're fantastic. Black Series are some of my favorite, you know, as far as detail goes, price comparatively. They're awesome. Um, do you think we should ask him this? Uh, do you think he has uh, boxed versions, like sitting up in a tub somewhere or on this a This guy looks or... like a stud, man. I bet he does. You think he's, he's, he doubled up. You think he's, he's good. Two... Uh, if you look on the picture, the one that I have up on the screen right now, if you're watching on YouTube, he's, you can actually see that he's got like layers of these guys i mean i can see the full the troopers and they're even facing the other oh no that's a mirror but i mean troopers down below <laughs> i'm like how is he they're going the other direction this guy's got three this guy's insane no but i mean it's just <laughs> fantastic um and obviously a uh, black series collection i envy so good on you at, at gab underscore ochoa o-c-h-o-a good guy follow him the second one the most recent one that we uh put up was a guy by the name of Daryl, at Daryl Brent. And what he put up was, or uh, what things he was into, he said first and foremost he's into like some of the Lego ships. Yeah. Um, he's got to kind of lined up here, which yeah. is cool. And uh, he's got puzzles, books, and of course uh, a good stash of all of the movies. Right. Um, even on Blu-ray. He's got some cool art too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I And that's kind of one of the cool things about you know, the show me your collection. You and I were talking about it too. We've seen some massive collections, uh, just parts of it. As a matter of fact, we usually only um, ask them to give us three or four pictures, 
And, yeah. and we've had some just kind of give us 20 pictures. Which, and say, you pick four. Oh, it's fantastic, too. <laughs> and then we've had some definite like beginner pictures or beginner... Uh, collections. Not, I wouldn't say beginner, but specific collections where they're not out there. You know, They might pick a piece up once every six months or a year or, or pick a bunch of pieces up all at once just to kind of fulfill that, that Star Wars... Uh, or like our guy Hampton, who's in college and... He's got, yeah, I love that guy. He's yeah. got priorities, but he still squeezes some yeah. Star Wars stuff out every now and then, and that's that's great. Those are true B and Beers. Uh, we appreciate Blue Milk Brigade. Thank you guys. Um, it's it's a it's a whole it's like a whole nother subsect of of the Star Wars you know fan universe where you know we're all collectors. Most yeah. Star Wars guys are collectors. They collect the they even you know just collect the ideas and the thoughts of what the movies put out there, but sure. then also the the physical things that are are super cool and and you just sit around and look at them and you put a stupid room together and then you sit in it and it's your family called, shuns you. It's, it's fine. It's called nesting. <laughs> you're nesting. You're you're making your home a comfortable place to be in. Right. Um and remember if you want to be featured on hashtag show me your collection, send us up to four pictures through direct message and uh we'll we'll get we'll get you out there. At Hollow Chronicles. At Hollow Chronicles. On the twits. <laughs> Mm. Josh, before we get to the um, tip, have you gotten anything lately? Oh, dude. In the last two weeks? Yes. I'll tell you what I've got, and I have to throw it out there. Um, it's it's currently my favorite thing in, in this room right now, and I have to, I have to give a major shout-out to a favorite fan. I mean, he's really solidified his position there. Yeah, he's... <laughs> favorite fan, Matt... Gosh, I don't even know a handle up, but it doesn't matter because we just say Matt. We Matt just call Matt. Yeah, Matt for me did. We just we just throw it out there, and uh, oh, I got it here. As a matter of fact, I might have a picture I could put up for you there, Spoon. But uh, man, he got from from Junus or Jonas or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can't even pronounce his name. The tall and I, Swede. I won't even try and pronounce his last name. But you know, the current Chewbacca in uh, in in the most recent, you know, Solo and Beyond. Uh, he he got a personally signed, and here's the best part. You can't read it because it's in gold, and it's hard to read, but it says, uh, To Josh, long live the BMB, which is pretty awesome. Oh, that's rad. And, of course, signed by his his Finnish hand. Um, He's Finnish. Yeah, he's not not a Swede. He's He's, not a Swede. Don't say that. He's Finnish. Former basketball player for the Finns. He's a Finn, and he's 6'11", and looks awesome in that furry suit. So thank you very much, Matt, and I I appreciate it. And, And And thanks, Jonas. You know. I mean, or is it the you, cool thing, Matt, the cool Jonas, Jonas is probably, I, I have probably a, a soft like J. one of my <laughs> really good friends is Finnish. I should just ask him and he'll tell me. Um, but, uh, the cool thing was, is that, you know, Matt, this is a, col- are we going to use this later? Should I? No, we can use I'm going to throw now. it out. Cause we're in the collector. T- is that Matt, you know, we're trading for this as a collector. Uh, Matt doesn't have access to a certain store, um, that, is going to carry some stuff, and I'm going to help. He passes this on to me, and I'm going to go pay him back by by finding some cool stuff, hopefully, at our local store that we have access to. And it, it's just that's how you build a community. So you you extrapolate on that because you're, you're a little more. So our, the collector tip has real practicality for both you and I this week. Right. That if there's something that you want to get, whether it's new or old or somewhere in between, uh, if if you have something that you want to get but don't have the access to it, find someone or reach out to somebody that can and see if you can work something out. Now, we've only known Matt through Twitter since January. Right. Right. Well, it's not like we've known Matt or not gone back very far or anything like that. We just interact on Twitter and, and you know, message every now and then. And he seems like a good dude and I think he kind of likes us. So, um, you know, he was he was going to some uh, was it some sort of comic con or what? Yeah, it was a Midwest comic. He lives in uh, he's out in Oklahoma, so something. I yeah, I, it's, I forget the details. It's a good of what con because you know obviously Chewbacca's there. So yeah, and so he was like, hey, you know, you guys, I'm going to this, and and I'm I'm going to be doing this. If you guys want in, uh, you know, here's what it costs, and I'll I'll mail it to you. You know, and, yeah, and you jumped on it, and that was pretty cool, and. And then, uh, and it's you know the cool thing is is you can pay somebody back for whatever the the monetary cost was, yeah, but you can't pay them back for the effort for the thought, and and that's where the BMB that's where we come in. That's yes. what we do. 
We, we look out for each other. Yeah, it's beyond money. Yeah, money, you know, currency needs to be exchanged. Is to... it beyond the blast doors? Oh, I love those guys too. <laughs> oh, I got a shout out for them too. But anyway, keep going. Um, and so for me, I'm in the same boat, not being able, uh, not being able to get something that I really want. There is a there's an artist that. Um, I'm a big fan of, and you are too. And sure. we got to meet him a couple years ago in Portland. Um, in fact, I think he might be a Northwest guy, but um, not 100. percent His name's uh, Jason Chrisman. Okay, and, yeah. And he he has he he's been going to the Star Wars celebrations the last few years, and he puts out a Star Wars celebration piece specifically for the weekend. Right, and then. You know, in years past, he's had a few that he'll sell afterwards, but there's a limited number of them, and and I'm a huge fan of the guy, and we know a guy at Celebration this weekend, and so I texted him. I said, it just came to me last night. I was like, hey. hey boots on the ground. Hey, boots on the ground. If you happen to see this guy's booth, you know, here's his name. Here's a picture of the thing that he's got out for this weekend for uh, Star Wars Celebration only. You know, if you get it, I'll, you know, just just tell me what it costs. I'll, I'll I'll cover it. I'll pay it back or whatever. And and I think he's gonna hold it hostage for some trading stuff. Sure, too. sure. Yeah. But but as good. is his right. <laughs> yeah, he's not uh, he's not hawking it on uh, eBay for eight times the value of the, right. No, that's cool. Um, and that's uh, that's collectors helping collectors. Yeah, it's a, that's exactly what it is, and it's so cool when it works out because. Everybody walks away feeling good about it. Right. And so if you can help somebody out, you know, keep in mind other people when you go to cool things like celebrations or Comic Cons or whatever the case may be, keep an eye out. Oh, I had another guy ask me too. Uh, who was it? Rogue Two Squad or something? I yeah, think Rogue. He, I think he asked me once if uh, we were interested in some the old Star Wars trading cards. Yep. Because he came across. Uh, a notebook full of them, and he's like, "Hey, I just came, you know, you yeah, that's awesome." Then I was like, "No, but the thought was awesome that you know he would think of us." And again, don't know him all that well, but we're, BMBers, we're, we're man, making friends, and it's great. Yep, this is the good part of the internet. Yep, this is the good part of Twitter, where it's like it benefits people to. Well, and you look forward to hearing way. from, and you look forward to seeing what they get, and and then you know being able to help somebody is just fantastic. So if you can't find or if you can't get what you're looking for, and, and you're specific about it, find somebody, reach out. Maybe somebody can can help you out, and uh, or trade, or you know work out some sort of arrangement where everybody walks away happy and and winners. Winners. B and beers. B and beers. All right, man. Are you ready? <sighs> we ripped through that, and we, we gave ourselves enough time so that we're not too ridiculous on this pod. But are you ready? I'm. I don't even know what to call this. I don't. I think I don't originally know. I wanted to call it Andy's Manifesto, Star Wars Manifesto. Well, again, it was spring break, and I had a little bit of time because it was raining. And we Kyle Lefesto, like... <laughs> Ray Lefesto, <laughs> Epifesto, epi- yeah. Episode of Festo. Yeah, and and we're the main thing is we're trying to you know so well hold on. So first and foremost, what are we going to talk about next? We're okay. going to do what? We're 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 going to put out. I'm going to lay out and. It's up to you, Spoon. It's up to you, Twitter, YouTube. It's up to you guys to determine if you agree with me or not. Oh and if boy. you <laughs> if if you if you don't, uh, that's fine. It's I'm my feelings aren't going to get hurt, and I hope your feelings aren't going to get hurt if you think differently than me. Sure, because people do that online. No, and, no, we're oh, hey, look, we're all fans. That's who how we can come under the same fans, umbrella. But fans, what is fans short for, Josh? Family. <laughs> family. Yeah. Fanatics. Fanatics, exactly. And there are family. Some, there are some fanatics out there. And in 2015, The Force Awakens came out. Sure. And from the very beginning, the question that still has not f- fully been answered is who is Ray? Right. And and it's a good question, you know. A, well, of course, it's a natural question, and everybody's got their own idea about who she is, where she comes from, if she comes from anyone at all, you know, or is she a nobody from nowhere, like she says. So this question has been kicking around, and one way or another, it's going to get answered in Episode nine. 
Yes. She's either going to be somebody, you know, somebody's kid, somebody's offspring, uh, or she's going to be a nobody, you know, and her parents are exactly who Kylo Ren said they were. So, and even if we get no more clarification in episode nine, which I don't think we will, I think we'll get some sort of clarification, but, um, even if we get no more, um, it's something we'll still talk about. Sure. And so I wanted to revisit this before celebration and we're just getting it. You're in just, I think you're getting it under the wire because I truly believe that the, well, after this according weekend, to the Twitter verse that tomorrow we're going to get the drop. Okay. So tomorrow we're getting the trailer drop, which may or may not answer the question. I doubt it. it will. I, or give us clues to, to push us another direction sure. or whatever. But so, tomorrow we're going to get the, the teaser. I wanted to get, my the 12th of official April. stance all right in lock it in before celebration before the movie comes out even though we got a while before the movie still but i wanted to get it out there knowing full well after this weekend things might change a whole sure. bunch okay but i wanted to get it down now all right break it down and break it down okay so here's i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what i think and then I'm going to support it. Okay. Okay. As best as I can. Sure. Or with as much as I can. Okay. Pulling from a lot of different places. And I want people listening to understand that I've been thinking about this for years. Truly. And that it's not Truly. completely. A lot of people have. It's not completely fresh, but you get your own support for it, right? No, no. This, this is not even necessarily completely original. This is pulled from many conversations that I've had with people, like actual people interactions. Right. This is online interactions. This is watching YouTube videos about what other people think. And this is trying to be as complete and listening to every possible backstory to Ray that sure. has been thrown out there. Now, there have been things uh, like um, she's a, a Palpatine clone. Mm-hmm. Or, or and that was a fun one. We went over that. In the right, pod. right. It, the the idea of a clone it is fun. It is it does exist in the Star Wars current universe, yep. and you know, not that she was a clone of Palpatine, but Palpatine cloned her from you know maybe a Vader or something like that, or you know. Anyway, she's a construct of Palpatine, a, a Plan B or a Plan right. C or a Plan D or whatever, Plan P. Palpatine, mm. but um, you know that's that's kind of fun. We kicked that around a little bit, but um, probably not at this point. We're probably going to reintroduce Palpatine into Episode Nine when we haven't seen him in a couple movies. Yeah, I don't okay. know if we're going to probably do that. not reasonable. Yep. So I mean, like I I even like okay, well somebody brought this up or somebody thinks this. Let's test it out. Let's weigh it out. Let's because I, I'm a math teacher. And I think logical sequential. And there are some fan theories out there that I think are more emotion and feeling based. Yep. And that's not me per se. That's not to say that I'm right and they're wrong or right. they're, you know, but I'm just saying, I, for me, when I sat down to write this three page, what ended up being three pages four of, page. of what, what the answer to it was four question, pages. Was it four pages? Yeah. Okay, three and a half. Pages. I I'm guess. Done, I mean, I'm but you're on the fourth pages page. Pages we're going to call it four pages. College, so right. Good on me. Good on you. Um, B plus, by the way. <laughs> I should have had a peer edited. <laughs> um, but I, I waited out. I wrote down as much as I could. You know, like pros, cons. Here are all the things that that support it. Here are some things that might not. You know, that kind of make. All right. Are you Let's ready? Hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. So here's here's what I think. Okay. I think Ray is the youngest child of Han and Leia. Boom! We should have a drop for that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Do the pour. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So bold statement. Maybe not original, but bold, right? Definitely not original. I, this is. I'm not the first person. And the first to say thing. This. And the first thing that I would say is, as anyone that heard that comment, is like, boo. Well, why wouldn't they have a? You know, why wouldn't they recognize her? Why wouldn't they acknowledge so, that they had course. another kid? Blah 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 blah. And I, I plan on addressing all of your questions, okay. Josh. All right, keep going, keep going. All of your questions. Yeah, he's got a lot of questions. Okay, furthermore, I think Ray was at Luke's Academy when Ben burnt it to the ground. Okay. Okay. So first... She was there. First. She was there. She and... Like a youngling? Yeah, she was young. Like, 
like just slightly like, five. Young, like slightly younger than you saw her in the force. So dream. we're not talking about a twin of Ben. No. We're talking about a younger sibling. A younger okay. sibling of Ben. Because twin is obviously old canon, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, so I believe she was at the academy when Ben burned it to the ground, but Ben spared her, and he was the one that stashed her on Jakku. Mm. All right? Kylo knew the whole time who she was. Or knows. And, and where she was. Okay. All right? And it's funny watching the movie again through that lens. Through that lens, it's, right. It's kind of... It's interesting. I will okay. say that. It's interesting, and I've done it specifically for this pod tonight. All right. Um, so uh, Han and Leia don't recognize her because they, for years, have thought she was dead. Okay. They've moved on and not really moved on because they're no longer together. And that, you know, along with Ben going with Snoke. Right. Devastating, right? And that's something in any in an actual marriage or a relationship, losing children, devastating. Right. You know, right. Even a even a a child that has rebelled and gone off their own path, you know, that that can be devastating to a relationship. And Han and Leia didn't survive it. Like they they're not together in the sequels. Got it. They reunite and it's kind of friendly. Like the good old days, you know, they look at each other, sigh, the good old days, they give each other hugs, sure. you know, and there's some regret. You could feel it. But. So you're saying they just don't recognize Ray or, or wouldn't recognize Ray. She's much older. They're, she's gone in their minds. And obviously they have a lot of other things right. on there. There hasn't plate. been a sniff of information since the Academy. Why would they okay. think that Ray is, you know, their daughter? Okay. So point taken. Okay. Now, Luke, Luke doesn't know either. Sure. For the same reasons. He he goes gonzo. Right. And shuts himself off to the force. Now, if there was any chance of him maybe recognizing her, but he he's like hands off. Right. And so maybe a way for him to recognize her, even though like she's grown up now and maybe maybe it's just not the first inclination because he's under the impression that she's been dead for a long time too. Plus he's turned off to the force. Okay. Okay. So he can't see her in so that. So Luke can't see her either. Yeah. So and and I understand that for any theory that's out there right now, an element of faith must be taken. <laughs> okay? It's Roger. It's true. Sure. So if that right there is a bridge too far for you, Got I it. understand. Yep. I understand. You're not going to make me mad. That's fine. This is just Okay, I'm going to keep going. Keep going. All right. Not let's get to the meat. Not every I think you got some good stuff though. Not every piece of information, not every piece of evidence I'll I'll claim as evidence is as strong as you know it's not oak okay something's right. pretty flimsy here yep. so I'll just start off Ray uh, the first time we see Ray it's it's quiet it's on Jakku we kind of see her daily routine a bit and there she has a doll of a rebel pilot right okay and That's, you see that when she walks into her little you know abode right and we know that she's been on Jakku since she was a little girl right maybe somebody made it for her Maybe she made it because, you know, rebel pilots do have a place in the history of Jakku. You know, obviously there's wrecked X-Wings. Well, and the, the whole battle of Jakku. And yeah, that. and um, uh, even though she's after the battle, like, X-Wing pilots, you know, they're in the lore of the area yep. for sure. So, you know, maybe somebody made it for her. Maybe she made it or or maybe she brought it with her. Right. Like, that, that's kind of fun for me to think. Maybe, like, as she was leaving, that was the only thing that she grabbed. Uncle Luke. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, uh, you'll you'll find that a lot of the truths we cling to depend on a certain point of view. But um, but it's just okay. It's a connection to Luke, right. right? A rebel pilot, right? If the idea of being a rebel pilot someday is for her, that's exactly what Luke was going through too. Right? Someday she, you know, Luke wanted to be a rebel pilot as well, or be a pilot. A pilot, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's that. It's really flimsy, and that's not a strong piece. It's just there, but it's or there. maybe it's just a tie to connect back to the movies to give you some you sure know, some grounding. Sure. Very very flimsy. Sure, um, but it is a possible parallel to Luke. They gotcha. both wanted to be pilots. Yep. Okay. Ray knows how to fight. She does. She knows how to fight. Whether she it's kicks with some her, butt in the market pretty early. Whether it's with her staff, um, or she seems to be pretty comfortable with a lightsaber with no training. Right. Right. Growing up as a junker, she probably had to fight by necessity. You know, there's mm-hmm. probably scraps that she got into just for this is mine. No, I want it, or people stealing stuff, you know, whatever. It's probably necessity for her. 
but to the degree of her competence. Like right. she kicks butt. So you're saying and she that, in in Jakku, she took on two people and like took them out handily. defeated them. Yeah. yeah, defeated them. And she's very competent with her staff. Like I said, uh you either have to be really well trained, you know, with a lightsaber or with a staff to be that good mm-hmm. or you have to be pretty force sensitive on mm-hmm. on how things move and work, you know. So so you're saying that maybe she had some prior training. I I think that like a cat academic training. Like the body remembers. Okay. Right? All right, so so far we've got and nothing some real solid yet. Okay. But okay. but I'm just paving kind of some groundwork here. She's a youngling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ray can understand and communicate with droids. Interesting. Okay. This it is seems not a, like, I will counter you here. It seems like kind of a, a universal thing. Right. Like droid it's everyone not talks a, droid language. It's not a unique talent. Right. Like yeah. Okay. But she not only speaks with droids, but she's multilingual. I think in, in the Star Wars universe, anyone can speak any language necessary. You know, like solo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows a little bit. Like, of, I learned uh, some Wookiee. <laughs> yeah, just a little. And yeah, gargling. Yeah, but um, like I said, it's not a unique talent, but it is another similarity to Luke and Anakin. Sure, you know that they can communicate much more fluently, much more fluidly with other beings than I would say most. Okay, okay, just just another tie to. Some genealogy here. Got it. Um, she's a fantastic pilot. Anakin was, Luke was, Han was. Yep. She also is a fantastic pilot. And again, she just jumps in the Falcon and she's gone. Flies it like she's flown it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she drug it across the sand for a bit, but yeah, you know, it out. hey, we all. It's not like we've all had a couple fellows on right? Womp Rats with T 16s or no, anything. But, no. Uh she figured it out. Uh That's great. It. She's also a great mechanic. She's a fixer. You know who else was a great fixer? I like this connection. Anakin. Anakin was. And Luke, he pride. Han was. Well, Han, Han was a yeah, good mechanic. Han. But right. he had Chewie do a lot of stuff. He was a good delegator. Yeah. But, it, I mean, this is more like extended universe. You read his stuff. Han's tinkering on He's things tinkering all the time. All the time. Well, so, he, 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 he jacked up the Falcon to, you know. Oh, yeah. Put some. Put some heat in there. Fastest <laughs> ship in the galaxy. <laughs> what a hunk of joke. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, Anakin definitely... You know, connect definitely. Right? Yep. It's it's in the it's in the genes. Like they're tinkerers. They they're mechanical and and okay. All right. So here's where it gets. This one this one might be my most flimsiest. Okay. I'm gonna preface it. Your right balsa now. your balsa okay. wood. My, <laughs> my elasto stretch Armstrong here. Okay. Okay. Hux says to Kylo when they're trying to get the map off of Jakku. You know, BB-8 has mm-hmm. it. And, and uh, Hux says to Kylo, don't let your personal interests interfere. Okay. All right. Now, easily explainable, the map leads to Luke. Right. He's got... That's his personal That's his interest. personal yep. investment in the Seems thing. Seems the most plausible. Absolutely. Okay. But I got to think. All right. All right. And again, I understand it's weak, but maybe Hux knows too. Maybe Hux... And Kylo, because they're the underlings of Snoke, mm-hmm. they don't seem to enjoy each other. No, but they do have that in common, and I think both of them kind of hate Snoke. You know, okay. secretly that they, they he's a necessary, literally a necessary evil, right? Um, and he's allowed them to hold positions of power underneath him, and so they put up with Snoke, and they have that in common, and so maybe he knows they're kind of like frenemies. <laughs> <laughs> and so the personal investment also might be, hey, desperate housewives. I haven't the first forgotten order. <laughs> that there's a girl down there who you have a lot of personal investment in. Mm. So anyway, he's got a little blackmail issue. Yeah, that's pretty flimsy. Blackmailing a little bit, and I, I push comes to shove. No, I don't think that's actually. But okay, all right. So maybe a little bit stronger piece. Sure. In the old canon, which is. Supposedly no longer canon. But definitely dipped into from... In the old canon, uh, Han and Leia had twins, a boy and a girl. Jason and Jaina Solo. Okay. Okay, while technically the old canon is gone, it makes a lot of sense to parallel some of the things. Sure. Right, we still get Thrawn. Right. And, you know, he was old canon, but he got... He was enjoyed. 
Um, so, you know, they, they do bring a little bit, you know, it's not like they've completely thrown everything out, but they want it to follow their current order. Yes. The first Disney order. So it makes some sense to some of the bigger plot lines of the old canon to kind of bring them along, especially to bring on some of the older Star Wars fans. Okay. Excuse me. It makes sense that if Han and Leia had a son, Borg. if they had a son, they'd also have a daughter, even if they're not twins. Like, like it's not going to be exactly, but if Han and Leia have a son, then it's reasonable to think to, that they have a daughter, To parallel the canon, or to pull from the canon a little bit. Right. Okay. Okay. So... We're introduced to the son right away because he's bad. He's a he's you know he's the bad guy. He's mm-hmm. the, the co antagonist here. He's the Vader esque you know part of the bad guy scenario. Okay, and so again because they believe their daughter to have been killed a long time ago, she's off the radar. Right, and introduced but not as what you would think. So the Jaina Solo. Don't we have a picture for that that you throw it up there? Jaina right. Solo, so, which leads to yeah, there's a Black Series figure of Jaina Solo. Randomly, why isn't there a Jason? It's pretty randomly. Yeah, like okay, you're bringing old canon characters back. Kinda, okay. but they're uh, but most of them are connected. There's none that are back. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I could be, because I don't know everything. But oh, there's so many. Black what series. non-canon Black Series characters other than this are there? Reven. He's not non-canon yet. We don't really know because they haven't really addressed the old Republic as saying like maybe this Ryan is how... Johnson's new trilogy is though. We don't know yet. Though. I know, so we that. can't call it that. I know. Revan is Revan is. <sighs> he's he's still part he's of something. He's something. I think he he could still exist. But yeah. Um... So anyway, that's all I'm saying. So I I thought that was interesting too because I actually bought Jaina in a store, a Star Wars store, and and I was like, what? Because I didn't read that particular series and or the twin series and I, I never read it but well yeah like, they, why would they have this they put a lot of work into this it's sitting yeah, over here somewhere she's up there somewhere yeah it's i'd a, have to dig but it, it just it's it's weird it was yeah. weird to me the moment i saw it. like well, okay is there a jason that was my first question sure is there a jason to pair with right. jaina because they're twins of course and jason in the old canon turns to the dark side Ben, a.k.a. Kylo. Mm-hmm. All right. On killer. Nah. Yeah, yeah. And so here's the here's the description of the character on the Jaina box for the Black Series. Jaina is a crack pilot in the Rogue Squadron, as well as a Jedi student of Luke Skywalker. She is also a skilled mechanic, having learned from her father, Han Solo, and Chewbacca. She is also impressive in combat. Hmm. Sounds like somebody. Sounds like Ray. Sounds like somebody we know. Sure. Okay. Have we have we spelled Jaina backwards yet? See what that came up with? Um, that would be Anayaj. I knew it. Nothing to do with Ray. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> like that's just that's that's mm-hmm. a weird coincidence that was four years ago. Like that was a black series figure, you know, three, four years ago that like, man. If that's an actual Easter egg, I mean that would be really cool. I like it that you're pulling. That's that's cool because I asked the same question. I'm like, why do we? Why is this even a character? It's not in any of the. It's not in any of the cartoons. Nothing. It's not nothing. In any of the a book. Books. A book. A non-canon book, especially even at the time it was non-canon. So it's like I don't get it. Yeah. Weird. That's and, an Easter egg. That's and, deep. Well, it's going to become the most valuable black series I she's own. She's got dark hair. Come on. You know, she she's got a lot of the same physical features, even though the doll doesn't look like the Ray doll. You know, the face doesn't look I'm going like to put a staff in that doll's hand and see what I get. Okay. Let's see what Got happens. We'll put Why didn't we pull that out? Sorry. Know, what are you that's doing? a good idea. I thought we had a picture, though. Okay. Yeah, we right. did. Next, next piece of info. According to the Force Awakens Visual Dictionary. Okay. Okay. Ray's about 19 years old at the time of the movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pablo Hidalgo. He is a Lucasfilm creative executive. Oh, yeah. He rejected okay. us on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think he rejected That's us. another thing. He yeah, rejects yeah. everyone. Yeah. Um, he stated on Twitter, because somebody asked him, how old is Kylo Ren supposed to be at the time of right. The Force Awakens? And he said 29, 30 years old. Mm. So okay. 10 years older. So although Twitter is not gospel. <laughs> right? Don't tell them that. <laughs> Um, having about a 10-year age difference does allow for the timeline of the theory, Ben and 
Ray, our brother and sister, mm-hmm. to fit. Yeah, you got a 15-year-old and a 5-year-old. Yeah, or... Whatever. Yeah, or I'm whatever it that is. Up. Well, however old he was. Or maybe he was... maybe they're 11 or 12 years old. But, I mean, right. about that amount of age difference works with this idea that they're Well, she looks about 5 or 6 when she's being left on Jakku. Sure. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, she, like she looks like a kindergarten. Right. Right, so perfect youngling age there. Sure. For Anakin to wipe out. Yep. So, um... <laughs> So those... speaking of which, quick quick side note, I think Spoon sent it to me. Have you seen the the mesh, uh, the the meme online where they take the youngling that Anakin ignites his saber in front of, and, and they kinda... mesh it into Snoke? <laughs> <laughs> so the youngling from the temple is Snoke. Ends up being Snoke. That's gonna be the one that sticks. So, Sorry, yeah. I just did it. I threw it in the middle of your giant theory. And mine now took... I like that. Mine's one. a meme from Spoon. I like that one better. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, move on. Okay. Um. Anyway, those ages, those alleged ages, allow for this to fit. The, okay. The idea that they're brother and sister fits. plausible. We get it's, some plausibility. Right. It's okay. it's pl- it's possible, plausible. Okay. She seems like Ray seems like she's a combination of the best traits of Anakin, Luke, and Han. Right. The the lineage of the people of the, sure. of the men in front of her because. It was old can um, original trilogy, and and even to a degree the the prequels that you know it's pretty male dominated. Yep. Anakin, Obi Wan in the originals, and you get some strong Padme in there. Yep. Um, and Leia. In the original trilogy, you get you get some Leia, but it's still Luke, Vader. Sure. Um, you know, and and Leia as well. She's definitely um, with that as well. Han. Uh, but she seems like a best uh, the best traits. She's strong with the force. She's supremely talented. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a desire to help, like leave what's behind to go help. Motivated risk taker, willing to serve, willing to lead. Like she she puts Luke in her in his place. Like for a, a young person, that's to a Jedi that's master. That's takes some. Yeah, take some guts. Fortitude. Okay. She is also she also has qualities and characteristics of Leia. Yeah. Um, being that she is strong willed, speaks willed, her mind. Speaks her mind, absolutely. She's dark haired, dark eyed, right? Feisty. Yep. A lot like Leia. Leia. All right. Han in The Force Awakens offers her offers her a blaster and a job. Okay? At at Maz's place. Right. Now he could very easily be sympathetic to her uh, situation. He might see her and have a little bit of a longing feeling, like, "Yeah, I'd, I have a. I, if I had a daughter, right? I would. Well, and I think I'd do that. That's definitely do that for apparent. Her too. Despite your theory, that's definitely apparent. It's a, it's a kind of like you would be my daughter if I had one because of her affinity to fix the Falcon and you know all that stuff. Yeah, they finish each other's sentences. Ruff, and, sentences. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> That's close. <laughs> yeah, sandwich, uh, yeah, sandwiches. Sandwiches. Sorry. Um, and so maybe maybe there's more there than just some affinity for somebody who's kind of like him sure. a little bit. Like maybe there's a bit of a longing. Like, you yeah, know, this is a kind of deal that I wish I. would This is had. the kid I wish I had instead of that. So that punk guy that's gonna shove a saber through me. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! So, uh, Ben's reaction or Kylo's reaction. To hearing that a deserter stormtrooper and a BB-8 droid escaped the First Order with the aid of a girl, when he's brought this news, his reaction was instant and telling. What girl? Ooh. All right. Now, is that the first? Let me just ask you this, because I... That's when he lights it, and he just starts... Really? That's when he throws his fit? That's when he throws his fit. So he throws a fit after he hears it's a girl... Did he know anything about the girl, or was he throwing a fit because they lost the plans again, the BB droid? Well, that depends on which theory you kind of hold to. Now, right. if you are a believer like me... A believer? That... Uh, I believe oh, hold that, on. Yeah. We got to come up with a something-something there. <laughs> I'm going to work on it. You keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, anyway. Um, but he... Like, when the when that officer tells him they had help from a girl... He's like, what girl? Like, yeah, he instantly I mean, it's gets defensive. Instantly. Huh? And to me, that's like, 
Jakku girl has helped escape from the First Order. Like, not everybody does that. Or can get away with it. And right? can get away with it, right? And so, for me, it was like he knew right then and there and was concerned immediately that Ray was found that a by someone than him. Yeah, by someone other than him. So, to me, that was a more of a telling piece of evidence. For okay. Me. Like, that. that's not as flimsy as some of the other things that I've said. That fits, again, if this is true, then his reaction should be that. Sure. Okay? So, anyway, next piece. On Star Killer Base, Kylo stated about Rey, she's just beginning to test her powers. The longer it takes to find her, the more dangerous she becomes. Okay? Okay. <sighs> He knows, if if I'm right, he knows that the body remembers its functions quicker than the mind remembers its memories. Right. Okay. So in order for all of this to work, in order for Ben to stash Ray on Jakku and her stay there, because she has a strong desire to stay for... Someone coming back. Her family. Uh, right. There's a... It's never specific... You know, it's not who's. I'm waiting for my mom and dad. I'm waiting for my brother. I'm waiting for my. It's just I'm waiting. I gotta go back. My family. She says that one time. It's just like it's this desire to go back, but for what? There's really nothing. She doesn't have a memory of a mother or a father, right? She yeah. Never so, describes... so this is you know we know or we that, just hear family. We know that Ben has the has a has an ability to get in people's minds, probe it, find out information. And extract it, right? He mm -hmm. did that to Poe. He tries to do it to Ray, and 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 he he succeeds, but then he also gets pushed out. Right. Okay. So he has this ability to get in people's minds, and we know that uh, from Obi Wan. You know, you can you can bend the mind of a weak minded person, or a fool, or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you can you can insert, like move along. You know, there's nothing. You know let us go and stormtroopers let him go mm -hmm. okay now ben tries to kylo tries to get into the mind of ray and he does but then she pushes back she's older now she's a little she's strong more strong willed now it's a little force, yeah. it's a little more difficult now than it was when she was 5 when he just when he could just convince her that plus this she is, trusted him if if this is true she would trust her brother right because yes yes and so how easy would it be for somebody who's been training as a jedi for longer than she has you know he'd, he'd be in his teens i suppose and how easy would it be to like cover up a couple you know some some memories in her head as a five-year-old as compared to a 19 or 20 year old sure like super easy to Mind trick a five year old. Yep, I would think if you were using the force for ill gains, you know, like I mind trick five year olds all the time. <laughs> so this is this is how nephew. it's possible, right? Again, and there's an element of faith I understand to that, but it's it's easily explainable. I think, like, okay, so Ben stashes her away, mind wipes her a little bit, gives her a sense of I need to stay and wait, mm -hmm. and so she does, but she doesn't really know why or who, but she just knows she has to go back. Right. Okay. So, so anyway, he knows that the more she's testing her powers, the more dangerous she becomes because he knows she's got the same lineage I do. I'm strong with the force. I can do some cool stuff. So will she if she starts to figure out the longer it goes here. Okay. The body remembers. Right. Even the basic training that she had as a youngling, she starts. She's starting to remember. Um. Kylo says to Ray. Han Solo, you feel like he's the father you never had. You'd be disappointed. That's obviously his projection of his sure, feelings onto sure. her. But he feels like he has to tell her that because he brought it up. Like, this wasn't something like Ray says to him, like, mm -hmm. Han is sentimental to me. I, I like this guy. He's my friend. You know, he says he's the father you never had. You think he's the father you, ne you never had. You'd be disappointed. So he tries to cut Deflect, that, yeah. you know, right away. He brings it up, not her. He brings it up because he knows, and he is trying to cut that tie as swiftly and as quickly as he can. Okay. Okay. Next piece. Ray's not a real name. 
Because a couple reasons. Um, the first being when we're first introduced to Ray on Jakku, she's eating her meal at the end of the day, and she throws on a storm. Uh, excuse me, a, a, a pilot. pilot helmet. Yep. And in Arabesh. Arabish. The uh, the alphabet of the times mm-hmm. in Star Wars. Uh, on the side of the helmet, it says Ray. Okay, it spells Ray. Now this, I'm going to pause you. This Do is it. Do This it. is something, has this been brought up before? Yes. Okay, so that's pretty, that's, and I didn't know that because I wasn't dig, digging as deep as, and you weren't either, but that's, that's, that's a very classic like Kaiser Soze type of scenario there. Take okay. your name from the, from your surroundings because you don't know what it is. That's not Kaiser Soze, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's interesting. So keep going. Sorry. So that's a good one. That's it, the one that it, made me just go like, hey. It actually really? spells R. Like there's three letters right over the ear mm-hmm. on her left. Yep. On the left ear. It, there's an R. And then the second letter is an A-E. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a long A-ish mm-hmm. sound. And then the last is an H. Okay. So it's Ray. So yes, it could be yeah pronounced as Ray. Now there is some you know, deep dive, it's a, of who this Ray person actually is, it's the last name of the actual pilot whose helmet it was. Sure, but it's obviously an adopted name then. But. Or could be. Yeah, very easily. If like, so she's able to communicate with anyone and everyone, you mm-hmm. know, she understands droids and other languages and, yeah. you know, Tito, that's just Tito, you know, but Tito's not speaking basic Mm -mm. and so uh stupid tito (laughs) and so it makes sense that she'd be able to read you know she can read and arabesh is the common well at least for the rebels and the resistance it's the common alphabet and so so she has this helmet in her possession it's something that she has and maybe has had for a long time it definitely looks old and like it's been around and and so well who is she well i don't know i'm i'll just i'm ray because this is my helmet, and that's what it says on it. So that's who I am. I'm Ray. If anybody asks, I'm Ray, because that's I don't know. I don't know my name. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I thought I like I that. That was too big of an Easter egg just to let slide. Like, Agreed. why would it be Ray? Why would the helmet be Ray, and her name is Ray? Like, <sighs> is that just a coincidence? Come on. Come on. That's Come on. a too big of a coincidence slash an Easter egg in my mind. To just be, oh, that's a weird coincidence. The pilot's name was Ray. Move along. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> way too big of a coincidence. She has awareness. Um, it, even as a junker on Jakku, she has heard of Luke. She's heard of Han the Smuggler. Hmm. And, um, and she's, like, she's like, Luke Skywalker, he's, he's real? I thought he was a myth. You know, Han Solo the, the Smuggler? Like she has, she knows, and and that could be, you know, I mean, they could be galactic mill. legends yeah. too, you know, very easily they could be, and or are they were generals of the re, you know rebellions, or so. or they could be old memories scratching at the back mm-hmm. of her head, you know, like okay. Luke, yeah, yeah, he he's real, right? He's not just a, a a story, you know, that I have in my head, sure. Um, so you know, possible again. Oh, back up. No, I'm not going to back up. George Lucas. George Lucas has thrown out the idea of Kira Solo. Okay. Okay. Kira Solo, which explains for the name change to Ray. You know, Ray's not a real name. It's Kira being a grandchild of the Mm -hmm. uh, Darth Vader. And he, in a Vanity Fair promotional, like, little online thing, they had famous people ask J.J. Abrams... uh, Anything. Ask J.J. Abrams anything. And so one of the people that popped up was George Lucas. Who's who's that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, his question, and here was, here's was the word for word. J.J., what happened to Darth Vader's grandchildren? Children. Children. J.J. laughs it off and says, you tell me. You made all this blank up and kind of laughs it off. And now if I choose to read way too much into this. Oh, no. Okay. Impossible. All right. So grandchildren is plural. It is. There's a lot. There's more than one. There's more than one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we know of one, but to have grandchildren, there needs to be at least one more. And so was that an Easter egg? Was that a slip? Or was that just 
Because in old canon, Vader had yeah, grandchildren. Right. You know, Luke and Mara Jade had a kid. Sure. Um, whose name was Ben, actually. And, uh, you know... They, Creepy. Weird. So they're, they're kind of combining some things in the old canon into what's happening now, I think. But um, <laughs> but then I here's something funny. Like, again, getting way into my head about it. Um, unless he meant what ha- um, what's happened to Darth Vader's grandchild... Ren. <laughs> okay, dude. All right. Is we're that gonna, too much? In we're going to leave head? that behind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now you're getting creepy. Okay. So um, he could be referring to another Skywalker. Sure. In sure. nine. And all right. Moving on. The last we see Ray in The Last Jedi, she's piloting the Falcon with Chewie, where Ben should be. Hmm. Right. Theoretically. <laughs> right. Where he could still be, or he, he, he could still be end up there, but she is coming into her heritage as part of the Solo Skywalker legacy. Okay. Right? She seems to immediately connect with the Falcon, and she is piloting the thing with Chewie. Now, Lando piloted the Falcon with Chewie as well. Right. We know that. But that was his ship first, so he he, he deserves to be there. Right. Side story for the Falcon yeah. there. Right. But where Ben should be, she is. Okay. Okay? So she is taking the mantle of, of of the family. She's taking the family mantle. She's she's now taking over where Han was and Ben should be. Okay. Okay. Whew, I need to take a breath here. You're pretty getting pretty excited about this. I know. I, there, I only have a few left. All right. Um, also, you know that, you know that, you ever watched the Harry Potter movies? I did. So, like in Deathly the Hallows, books. number one, right? The movie, I'll I'll say it's in the book too, of course. But Hermione casts a spell on her parents so that they'd mm, remember her. Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is a little bit kind of what I was thinking, like so a little Kylo Hermione like, thing. Her Kylie, Ker, Ky, 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 Kyliney. Her, All right, keep going. Her Milo. <laughs> Her Milo sounds terrible. <laughs> All right, okay. Just like Hermione sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway. We need to talk about the vision, the force vision. Man, I yeah. Okay, you're you're scaring me there because because I brought this to to you. I was like, have you watched this recently? Yeah. So, do you want to say why you wanted to bring it up? Go ahead. Well, I watched it for the first time and really watched it instead of it being a filler piece for her to get to the next step, which was Maz coming down and telling her about her, you know, the the saber and finding Luke. It was just kind of this weird flashback that I would, I didn't connect with. But when I finally watched it thoroughly and paused it and went back and paused it and went back, and it's got some... had speakers turned up. And I had loud. earphones in, so I was listening to the things. And, and first and foremost, there are some really interesting sounds that are going on. First, it starts with Vader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely a Vader-esque breathing. Then, and now I, of course, it's been three weeks and I've been through, you know, Hawaii and all that stuff, so I've forgotten it all. But um, you know, then there is uh, a def- a definite Luke. No, no, like from from Empire, right? There is a uh, Obi Wan esque sound. Uh, I forget what he said. Do you, do you remember what he said? I no, it, told you. The, you and McGregor actually voiced it. He did. Yeah, he they blended his voice. Yeah, so with, there's Obi Wan with. Uh, Sir Alec Guinness. There's Obi Wan saying something, and then there's Yoda talking about the Force as well, and all this happens. Now I'm not talking about the visuals at all. I'm only talking about the the audio. Mm-hmm. Now the visuals bring something completely different, which I think you're going to hit on, and and you pointed a few of those things out to me. I had never. This is embarrassing. I had never put together that Kylo had the Knights of Ren behind him. I just, it just was a rainy sequence that went too fast, and and I didn't care. I never cared. I moved on because I was a little, you know. Uh, I was a little more into the rest of the movie than I was into the details. So, and then at the end, well, I don't know if I should go to what Maz says because that's what brought me to you. Was like, how, how can we deny this? Okay, so so take me back through that. Just, All right, just now, Maz self proclaims here that she recognizes eyes. Okay, right when Ray gets up from the table after they're all kind of chatting there when about Finn leaving. Finn gets up to go, and then Ray gets up to go talk to Finn out of leaving. Maz 
immediately. Now this happens quick. Like she gets up and leaves and then she turns right to Han and says, who's the girl? Who's the girl? Yeah. And then the scene cuts. So we don't know what he says. We don't know the conversation after that. Just who's the girl? Scene cuts. The next time we see Maz is in the basement after Ray has had this force vision. And we'll get to the vision here in a second, but um, because there's, I think there's some really telling information in that. But the next time we see uh, Maz is in the basement after Ray had the force vision. And I think based on whatever Han says to her, you know, who's the girl after that, whatever he says, I think she might have figured something out. Okay. Okay. I think all of a sudden the conversation takes a little bit of a different uh, meaning through this, again, through this lens. Here's the conversation that happens. Ray says, what was that? I shouldn't have gone in there. This is immediately after the vision. Yeah, and this is the one that hyped me up. This is the one I was like, well, how can we deny this? Maz says, that lightsaber was Luke's and his father's before him. And right. now it calls to you. Yeah, that, that's that's the line where I'm like, why, why are we denying this in any way? Why would why would they connect those dots? Now, other than to use a line that's been used before, like by Obi Wan, this is your father. You know, this was uh, your father's or whatever. Yeah, how do how was it say? Anyway, it's been used before that exact same line. I just not pulling from the right place there, but mm-hmm. so, so other than to use a, a line that's very familiar, why, yeah. Why would they state that? Maz is in in my eyes. She's establishing lineage right here. That's how I felt. Right. So I actually came Anakin, to you, Luke. I came right. to you and and said before you know I said hey. Just based on that in a very simplistic view, and it's been said before, but I'm like, how can we deny this again? I raise Luke's daughter. Because okay. it would be easier for Luke to have a daughter and not know it <laughs> than it would be for Leia, right? So that's just saying, sorry. That's yeah, the way no, it is. that's you're you're right in that regard. Right. Um and there are people... But it would also be simpler and lazier too. So I, I I'm liking what you're what you're dishing here. Go okay. Ahead. So I and I believe it's establishing lineage too that she comes from Skywalker lineage. Just my take on it is that it's not through Luke, it's through a sister. So okay. which still absolutely works. And then she says, I have to get back to Jakku. And Maz looks at her and says, Han told me. Interesting. Okay. We d- she doesn't say what. She just says, Han told me. Um this is where I think Maz has kind of connected some dots. She's right. looked into her eyes. She sees, you know, she's just like she did with Finn. She's seen those eyes before, and right. these eyes say this. Okay, well, she looks into Ray's eyes. She says, Han told me, although it doesn't, it, you know, go on. Dear child, I have seen your eyes. You already know the truth. Whomever you are waiting for on Jakku, they're never coming back. But there's someone still who could. They aren't talking about coming. She's she's telling her they're not coming back because they're already here. Right. They're already here. And Kylo knows that she's not on Jakku anymore, so he's not coming back for her either. Right. So nobody is literally coming back for her because nobody thinks she's there. Nobody, Everybody knows she's, she's not, not there. there. Yeah. yeah, she's not there. And so everything Maz is saying is true from a certain point of view. And I... And I know that could be a crutch, but it works, okay? It actually works. And then Ray says, Luke, right? Right. So and then Maz finishes by saying, or finishes her little piece here, which says, the belonging you seek is not behind you, it's ahead. I am no Jedi, but I know the Force. It moves through and surrounds every living thing. Close your eyes, feel it, the light. It has always been there. It will guide you. The saber. Take it. Maz knows Jakku is pointless. She doesn't say yes or no when Ray says Luke. Right. She just lets her say it. Um, only that the light has always been there. She's asking Ray to, t- to remember. Remember the light. Remember the lightsaber. Here's, here is an object that is from your past. It is from your heritage. It is you. It is your calling. It is your family. Take this and remember. Okay. And then she says, 
I'm never touching that thing again. I don't want any part of this because it scares her. Right. It scares her, and it could scare for a lot of different reasons, but one of them could be because... Could have been that queer, creepy vision she just had. Yeah, and it could be because she has an inkling that Maz might be right. Now, I interrupt... There's nothing on Jakku for her anymore, which she feels so firmly attached to. And I interrupted you in the vision part because one telling part was was in that rain scene where Ray is about to get hit, killed or attacked by somebody, and Kylo, you know, the Kylo saber goes through his chest, and and then there's that scene where it's Kylo and what we assume are the Knights of Ren, and and there's bodies everywhere. Right. And it's as if Kylo had just saved Ray, and then cut to the next scene, she's five years old, saying no, come back or whatever. So yeah, that that would be. Um. Yeah. So you were connecting. You connected that when we talked about it a little bit. It's like okay. Well, in that scene, she was you know full grown Ray, but she might have been experiencing what. So she's, she's Kylo having, saving her as a young Ray, right? So she could be having a memory here of, you know, of somebody coming to attack Ray, you know, in the rain, and and it was it was raining when he burnt the place to the ground, right? Was it? I don't know. In the academy, maybe. Anyway, anyway, somebody's trying to hurt. Ray, and she's having this memory, but she's seeing it as herself um, through this vision, not as her younger self, but she's just seeing it as herself. Somebody's trying to attack her, and then the red lightsaber, like you said, goes mm-hmm. through the the person and, and essentially saves her, and then there's the Knights of Ren, and Kylo takes a step towards right, her. Right, right. And, and I think that's big. It's not just that there's a, a scene with the Knights of Ren, but then he takes a step towards her, which immediately cuts to you know, five-year-old Ray and Unkar has got her by the arm and she's saying, don't leave me. Right. So you got Kylo stepping forward to her, followed by young Ray saying, don't leave me as though he's, she, Kylo's looking at the screen. Ray's looking back at Kylo. Piece those two together. And Ray is being left by Ben. Don't leave me. She knows it's him. Mm. And, and and then that that kind of hit me like that was a little weighty to me like oh okay yeah that that right there is what what tipped me to this to believing this right that right there that little quick is a little play on camera angles mm-hmm. he takes a step forward she says don't leave me mm. those happen right next to each other they do and it's like peanut butter and jelly and the Vader breathing. And the Luke, that's, if she's, my thing, The what I got into is like, how is she connecting so deeply in this vision with Vader and Luke, and even Obi-Wan for that matter, and Yoda, without it being connected to, why is the Force showing her this in that way? Obviously, Luke was very connected to Obi-Wan and very, you know, connected to Yoda. Mm-hmm. So why is she getting this information other than what it's stored in the lightsaber or something crazy like that. But, you know, yeah. I don't know. Well, they say that kyber crystals, they call to the users, kind of like the wands in Harry Potter right. kind of call sure. to the users too. So JK, stealing stuff. <laughs> so anyway, if I, I don't know, if, Josh, if you think of like movies or TV shows where somebody has amnesia and they can't remember, um, as they gradually kind of start to remember usually what they find out is more than they can handle. Right. And they're like, no, no, no. Sure. And then they just... Overboard. Yeah, they just got to... Goldie Hawn. They just got to... Uh, they just got to take a time out. No, that, that can't be... You know, that can't... It's too much. The truth overwhelms them. Right. Right? This is the reaction that Ray has with the lightsaber. Like, no, no. this That's too much. She just had a vision slash memories. Right. It's overwhelming her. She doesn't want anything to do with it. It's just too much at that moment. Right, this happens in movies and in yeah, TV. in this reality. Is, this 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 is something this that is we, real. This plays out, right? Sure. Okay. And the other thing I'd point out is, for what reason, you know, if you look at it through this lens, for what reason or purpose does that vision uh, exist, if not to connect Ray to the saber or to the lineage in some way? Mm-hmm. There's no other reason other than let's throw a vision out there. Yeah, unless like, hey. She's supposed the to vision has to mean something, right? Because when we had Luke's vision and Dagobah, 
it was to mean like you are following in your father's footsteps. You could become your right. father. Be careful. Be careful because he chops off Vader's head and the mask gets, explodes and it's Luke's face and the ma- you know you could yeah. go to the dark side. This, that vision, although weird and out of place, seemingly right. out of, out disjointed, of, disjointed, still had to hold a meaning and it did. So why wouldn't you say that the vision in Force Awakens has to hold a meaning exactly. and it does? Exactly, and this is what I think that meaning is. Well, I'm agreeing uh, with in, you. In part. Okay, so Unless then... Unless it's Luke's illegitimate kid, but other than that. <laughs> th- th- we'll do your theory next week. Sure. Um, It'll take like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do any research. So this, this, begs the, this begs the question, so like, why, why did Ben do that? Why did Kylo stash, you know, keep her and stash her yeah. and then not tell her the truth? Right. Um, so we know that Ben's family tears him up, right? Sure. He is split, to use Snoke's words. He is split. Right. And he's got these family issues. He feels betrayed by his uncle. Okay. Because he was, you know, he thought he was being attacked by him. Right. Um, he's He feels betrayed by his parents for leaving him with his uncle. You yep. know, hey, you left me with him and he tried to kill me. <laughs> okay. Now there's also in two different ways. Yeah, one where he had an angry face, and one where he had a sad. Face. There's also a lot of manipulation by Snoke. We can't sure we can't stress that enough. But you know, then there's the fact that his grandfather was one of the most powerful Sith lords of all time. He keeps getting more powerful too. If you man, all the comic books and stuff. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, Vader. We're finding out how bad of dude he's, he was. Yeah, man. So he is quite me. split, filled with anger and confusion, where he could kill his father and wanted to kill his uncle Luke he couldn't kill his mom yeah so again that's more he's he's split he's it's split, not yeah. an easy this is not an easy thing he is wrestling with it he wrestled before I mean he wrestled it's not like he just easily killed his dad he wrestled with it and there were some that said you know Han took the saber on himself right, and right make right, it right. easier for him whatever that's a stretch maybe yeah, that's a stretch it, unlike any of this yeah so where he could kill his dad and wanted to kill his uncle, he could not kill his mother, nor could he kill his sister. Okay. Maybe he saw that um, that Ray had innocence to her. Right. That that she was, you know, not not tainted by Luke as much, you know, because she was so young, or or just that he genuinely loved his little sister. Right. You know, like you can't underlay that. So so he leaves her with no knowledge of Han and Leia, right? He leaves her on Jakku without memory of her actual parents or uncle or even of himself. Right. If, you, if you're going to convince her to stay, you got to wipe all the memories, including the ones of her. So, uh, so Ray doesn't know. He tries to, Kylo tries to convince her that she is truly a no one from nowhere. So she doesn't have the same family hangups that he does. Right. Cut the family ties because or the family that, ties, or that he can have her for his, you know, for himself, for his own, right? You know, there's that to part lead her down that path. Definitely, yeah. there's, there's definitely that part. But in order to do that, she can't have the same family struggle that he wrestles with, right? And so, they're nobodies. They're, you know, you know the truth. Say it. They were nobodies. They were filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. They're dead in a pauper's grave in the Jakku Desert. You have no place in the story. You come from nothing. You are nothing. I mean, pause. When you say it like that, it's like they're, it's a it's a it's a deliberate plant. I mean, yeah. Pause, but not to me. Hmm. Join me, please. Please, like you don't say please to somebody that you don't care about. Or no, or no, really, right? You at know, all. and so, or might have a crush on. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, so you see what he's doing here. Ray's parents are disappointing, uncaring, and dead. All of the opposite of what they actually are. Sure. And so, um, you have nothing, and she is less than nothing. You are from nothing, and you are less than nothing. Hmm. The only thing that she has is Kylo, a- according to him. Sure. I'm the one who can teach you. To tell you where your place is, I am the I am your mentor, your savior in a sense, um, and your family. I am your family. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm the important person. Ultimately, 
he, she is who he wants by his side, the apprentice, maybe that he wants, so that they can take well, they or did. the family that he can shape in his own, you know, yeah. Ideals. And they they just got done taking out Snoke, and so it's like, now let's do this, you and me together. That is a pretty solid brother and sister moment, right? Pretty solid, and so. Or so they can rule the galaxy instead of father and son as brother and sister. Mm Because there's these family connections are all the way throughout the story. And so Kylo wants to tell her so badly that that's I'm your brother. Like like you're my sister, I'm your brother. But he can't. He can't just tell her that because like the lightsaber, it's overwhelming to actually process that at this time. And why would she believe him? Exactly. And why would she? You know, although he did tell her the truth about Luke. And what actually happened between them? She, he was end up telling the truth about that, which is to hook her, right? Right. To get her, to get his hooks in her, and so it could have happened. You know, he could have so- said it right there in Snoke's throne room, but he knew she wasn't ready. And she wasn't ready to buy in. So we wait to Episode Nine, and so we have seen Episode Seven and Eight pay off huge nods to the original trilogy, right? Episode Seven was a big Star Wars, you know. Tip the cap sure. to them. Star Killer. Uh, exactly. There are a lot of themes that kind of run parallel there. The last Jedi had was darker. It was like, you know, Empire Strikes Back. It had some some of the same things in, um, you know, Return of the Jedi. And so, you know, they're 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 paying off the original trilogies in in ways even throughout the sequel trilogy. Um, and so, I firmly believe this all ends, or or the apex moment in nine is no ray or no kira whatever you want to call it sure no i am your brother ah okay ray yeah i mean it like for me that was the apex in the original trilogy that was the no way that was the oh my gosh moment that was the is this for real is this true and how symbolic would it be for the drop the mouth you know drop your jaw moment to be i am your brother hmm well, it sounds like you're spoiler alerting right now, huh? Yeah, there's my spoiler. You're not going to be. You're and not going to be surprised. From you're going to be fist view, bumping. Um, side note: I've I've never I've never really gotten the 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 Raylo. Um, I know there's a there's that a, might there's be a another lot of support. Pod. That might need to be another pod. I know there's a lot of support behind it, and we, and we can definitely uh, go go through that rabbit hole. Um, and and discuss and I don't that. mind. Look, the the evidence. I think you could take, and I'll just say this real quick because I know you're going to be more you know, uh, robust on it, but there, th- look, the signs are all there mm-hmm. for the Raylo concept. I don't discount that there's, there's, you know, there's, it's a vali- possibility. there's validity to the theory, I just definitely... like there's validity to this theory sure. or any other theory. And so I'm, I think we need to make sure we say like, look, because Raylos are pretty adamant about their, it's funny that they have a term now. What I don't know what to call you, a solos or something. I don't, I don't know. know. But mm-hmm. I mean, they're pretty, We've had some strong conversations on Twitter about it. And oh yeah, I've been called names because yeah, which which is unfortunate because holy cow, we're the <laughs> easiest going. I mean, I will high five on a Raylo concept the same as I will on yours. There's no pride involved there, and as a matter of fact, if they do it correctly, so be it. Yeah. Good, yeah. And I would let's, be, let's... I'd be the first to say if uh, if Raylo happens. Uh, I certainly think that it, awesome. it could just happen. make sure you do it right and make sure <laughs> I'm happy with it. You know, I yeah. mean, not I'm, I mean that the, that the fans are happy, but, uh, so there's plenty of evidence, you know, the hand touching the force connection, all those things. If you eliminate Snoke or any of the other things that go in there that could totally lend towards a, a, a Ray and Kylo connection, uh, romantically. However, I, the reason I'm, I'm opposed to it is because if you take star Wars in general, and this is my little take here. Okay. If you take Star Wars in general, they uh, in in the original and the prequels, they don't hold any punches on setting up romance. And the and and I'm saying like they were even setting Luke and Leia up in New Hope mm-hmm. until Lucas is like, oh wait, never mind, they're brother and sister. Right. And then boom, quick pan, and Han's got Leia up against the computer panel in Hoth. You know, right, bam. Yeah. I mean, romance happens. And let's go to the prequels. I mean, Anakin's in love with Padme. Right off the, I mean, he's a little kid in the first one, but in the second right. one, boom, romance happens. They're not, they're not sly on the romance tip. Yeah, all right, but, but we got you, Rose and Finn kissing get, in a chip. I mean, this, <laughs> they don't. Uh, and and by the way, let me let me keep going. See, I'm on a roll here. By the way, that the Rose and Finn connection 
is your romance, right? They had to throw something. I feel, and it's almost forced. You feel like they had to With throw a in. F? Yeah. You feel like they had to throw in the Rose and Finn romance to get it, to get some romance in there, because it's not what Ray and Kylo are going to end up doing. And so to actually have Rose and Finn and Ray and Kylo, you know, uh, uh, make a connection, because Rose and Finn are kind of like Han and Leia right now. They're, they're, oh, do we like each other? You know, although it's not as sarcastic, but um, it's not as. Not uh, as scruffy and nerve hurting, rascally, yeah. rascally, yeah, scoundrelly. But um, I feel like, you know, just for flow, just if you're looking from a movie perspective for flow, if you if you have this budding romance between Rose and Finn, why are you going to overshadow it with Ray and Kylo? Although they are the main characters, instead, why not enhance it with a twist? That's why I'm on. You know, obviously, we have talked about your theory. That's why I'm on board, and it's, it makes me look at like, look. They, and I'll just say it again. They don't hold punches when it comes to romance in the Star Wars universe. Romance happens without without cloak and dagger type, you know, scenarios. It's either I love you or I don't, or I kind of like you and you can tell, you know, bam. That's you, it. You as simple that, as that, that concept is. Together. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well, I mean. I mean, maybe a brother or sister scenario gets thrown in there, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> it, <laughs> they are not opposed. Yeah, yeah. We've, got a, we've got a graphic for that, but anyway. We're not gonna put that no. up. Right. Um so anyway, that's 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 what I wanted to get out. It has been building up inside of me. I had to get it out. Record length pod tonight. <sighs> yeah, and apologies for that. It's that... a two week long pod or two week <laughs> uh, bottled up pod. <laughs> and I had to I had to get it out before celebration. I wanted to get it known and so documented. So, so people could either tell me what a fool I was or High five me for putting together something that I, I, I mean to You're say that for I, high fives really is I, that all you want is I high, fives? high fives? But right. I I put a lot of time and effort into writing all this stuff down and and getting it my thoughts together because I kind of need to do that if, yeah. if I'm going to make an argument. But if I'm wrong, I'm not. I'm awesome. Not, I'm not beating up myself over oh. it, and and I'm not gonna. You know, you want to take some shots at me for being wrong. I'm ready and we're easy to going. Take we yeah. like a good jab. Yeah. And especially if it has some wit behind it. I mean, come on, let's be creative. Dumbass yeah. is not creative. Dumbass is not creative. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, but I might be, I might be <laughs> anyway, Josh, I think we got some good uh, topics for the next. I, so we were holding back a lot of information still. We have some stuff we wanted to dive into and I definitely did, but that's okay. Um, uh, it's time. It's time to end. It's time to end and end with, if I may use some uh, Star Wars language, end with some hope because this weekend we're getting a title. We're getting My gosh. some. We're getting some. Uh, I'm trailer information <sighs> on a lot of things. Uh, we're getting pictures and and uh, memories being made on Twitter. Amazing th- uh, through Star Wars Celebration. I mean, it's a big, big weekend and Monday. There might be a lot of things different. And I'm just, I got to say, I'm just happy to be part of the community. I'm happy to be able to participate in in everyone's excitement um, yeah. and talk about it. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to be right. I'm happy to be uh, naive and just not even care. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm a little different than you. I go into things and, and let it just flow over me instead of maybe, you know, analyzing. Thinking about it. Thinking about it at all. all. Time. I got too much stuff to think about. Well, one thing for you guys listening to think about if you've made it this far with us here is that Congratulations. Is that we will be putting out our own trailer reaction video. Oh um, yes. We, we will? Yes, we are. We're gonna do that. Oh, that's a great idea. When are we doing that? Tomorrow? Uh whenever it happens. Okay. And it may even be live. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's going to be a lot. Well, no, I mean our reaction. We might put up our re- like okay, our, we're watching the trailer now and yeah. here's our live reaction. Yes. Or should we yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be our live reaction. So yeah, so stay tuned. We you might see some live cast from Andy and I or Andy or I just on our own cuz I think we might pull that out there. We might just go live as we react to certain things as they come up on uh, uh through the Star Wars celebration. Uh that's one of the things um I'm excited about is maybe just pop up for 5 or 10 minutes, give you our feed. Uh, or uh, uh, view on a couple things, but uh, definitely thank you so much for for joining us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following us. Once again, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and YouTube, and uh, listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Anywhere, anywhere uh, at Hollow Chronicles, Hollow Chronicles, you'll find us there. 
And uh, you guys are awesome. We love you. And, and don't, uh, don't forget, Mace lives. Mace lives, baby. Mace lives, <laughs> lives, lives, lives. I look forward to this. This party's over. What you say, Mace? Take a seat. Oh, snap. For your own good, stay out of this thing. Oh, yeah, Mace. Mace talking big. If what you've told me is true, you will have gained my trust. Mace trust. Oh.